as I told you that we will be discussing India in 19th century which is very important for socio-religious reform movement. We know that there are two types of problem in 19th century India. One was general and one was specific. And also don't forget what we may think and vice versa. For instance, what a social reformer thought was a problem, you may not think it as a problem. So we have to understand from their perspective that what they thought as the problem and how they addressed. Now, to begin with, the first and the most important person in 19th century, which we have to start, of course, is Raja Ram Mohan Rai. But before that, let again, one very important point you must understand. There are two types of movement which we can see easily in 19th century. One is the reformist and another is the revivalist. Reformists are those who were responding with the West, responding with the time, responding with the scientific temper of the modern era. Revivalists were those who thought that the Western system and culture is ruining their civilization and culture and as a reaction they started reviving their old so-called great civilization or they thought that their own civilization of ancient past or medieval past was much better than what the West is offering to them. So among Hindus as well as among Muslims we would find <coughs> both reformist as well as revivalist. Even among the Parsis and among the Sikhs and the other communities we will find that both the trend is very much visible. Since Muslims and Hindus in India are very large number and don't forget almost one third of Indian population or subcontinent population is Muslim. So obviously these two are generally more asked in this exam. So among the reformists two very prominent person whom we can easily understand Raja Ram Mohan Roy as well as Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan we can categorize them as a reformist, those who were ready to accept something coming from West as well as also very proud of their own route. Like Raja Ram Mohan Rai was very proud of his own route, whether his route is in Vedas and Upanishad or whether his Bengali route. Similarly, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was very traditional Muslim at the same time very modern Muslim and he was very much ready to accept anything coming from the West. He wanted a relook of all Islamic traditions and a reinterpretation of Islam in 19th century. So we really as reformists. On the other hand, we also find both among Hindus and Muslims a group who were reacting against the West. And they claim that nothing is good in the West. Anything which happened good first happened in their civilization first happen in their culture. So a new wave of revivalism started in 19th century, especially in the second half of 19th century. Among the Muslims it started little earlier and the two prominent groups which we can say has those who started revivalist movement. One was the Wahhabi movement of the Muslims which started in the very early 19th century and one is the Arya Samaj among the Hindus which started in the second half of 19th century. Now both had a strong feeling against West. They rejected anything and everything which is coming from West and as a reaction their movement started. So it's interesting for us to understand the two extremes, the moderate reformist and the orthodox revivalist movement. So when a question is going to be asked in 19th century whether the question could be very general in nature or question could be specific in nature say asking one person you have to describe this you have to understand the undercurrent which was going on in 19th century and this is where uh, your sentences and your lines are 
definitely going to be different if you understand the problems of 19th century and the different types of movements which emerged in 19th century, different individuals who were handling the situation differently. So ultimately you will get some good picture of 19th century and in what way it changed India and in what way it affected Indian politics. These are the things which we are trying to understand in 19th century. So let's start with the very first modern Indian who is called also as father of modern India. What is this word modern? Often we confuse with the term western. Make sure that whatever is western is not modern and vice versa. That's a problem in India that most of the common people, middle class people in India thinks that whatever is western is modern. So obviously whatever is Indian is traditional. In fact, this is not the case. Modernity is basically is a mindset. It all starts from your thinking process. When you think rationally, when you question something and then accept it, it is modern. When you apply your mind before adopting any tradition or anything in your life, this is modern. Now what happened in India and happening in India is that a person and a family having all the modern gadgets living in a very posh colonies, yet burning their bride for dowry, yet exploiting their own women in their house. So they had modern system, they have the modern equipments, but their mind is medieval. On the contrary, a person living in a village and a remote tribal area and giving equal rights to the women and the baby girl, they are much more modern than the person living in the posh colonies of say Delhi or Bombay or Bangalore or Madras. This is the point you have to understand that when we talk about modern, what is that modern? So when Raja Ram Mohan Rai we are saying a modern, it does not mean that he changed his attire from dhoti to Levi's jeans, but he became modern because his mind was now changing and ready to accept something which is coming from the West or Islam or Christianity or any other source. So, for understanding this, you have to understand that the ideas which were influencing these people for Raja Ram Mohan Rai, as we know, that he was a very well educated man. And not only in modern languages, but he also learned the classical languages, for instance, he learned Arabic, he learned Persian, he learned Sanskrit, he learned Hebrew. Now, these are all classical languages and if you know that the original Bible is in Hebrew, original Vedas and Upanishads are in Sanskrit, Quran is in Arabic. So, to understand the religion with its true spirit and meaning, it is very important to understand its original language. And don't forget that most of the books in ancient time, especially in India, like Vedas, are poetic in nature. And when you translate a poem in another, any other language, then it loses not only its meaning, but of course its charm. So it can be only understood and enjoyed in its original language. And that is why Raja Ram Mohan Rai gave emphasis that how it is important to learn a religion through its original language. So after learning this, he had a better knowledge about, say, what is called today as Hinduism. He had a better knowledge about, say, Christianity, about Islam. And he was ready to accept the good things from all or what he thought is fitted for India. For instance, the humanity aspect of Christianity influenced him. For instance, the equality aspect of Islam affected him. 
For instance, the spiritual aspect of Hinduism influenced him. He was also, as I told, was very well read person. So he read some great poets like Hafiz and Rumi, and they were two great poems in Persian language. He studied modern day thinkers like Voltaire and Rousseau and others political scientists who brought big revolution in France in 1789 and don't forget it was the formative years of Raja Ram Mohan Roy born in 1770 so obviously the 80s and 90s were affecting Raja Ram Mohan Roy's young mind so <clears throat> when he was growing up he was already having good knowledge of different religion and culture and it has been seen generally that when you have good knowledge of different culture and religion you automatically respect the other faith and you're ready to accept the views of others the problem with the modern indian society is that most of the people do not know the other faith and culture and forget the other culture they do not know even their own religion their own culture very well for instance the hindus do not know what are in vedas and upanishads the muslims do not know what is in quran and hadith so we are all mostly accidentally hindus and muslims so naturally where our knowledge is very limited so first important thing raja ram mohan roy did was that he increased his knowledge base not only through proper education system schools and colleges but also on his own and that is why when he came into contact with the west he was quick to understand that how in the last few hundred years the west has progressed a lot and one such thing is that they are thinking very logically and in a reasoning way their mind is not accepting something just because their parents and forefathers had given so this changed the entire thinking process and of course the society and this society changed the economy and the polity this is what the importance of raja ram mohan roy in india that he was the first who started thinking in this way now what he did on ground which influenced not only bengal but it is going to influence a major part of india because he literally triggered a movement and this is a movement of mind in 1814 he founded atmiya sabha at calcutta atmiya sabha at calcutta <clears throat> in 1818 one of his friend founded hindu college at calcutta david here was the name of the man who was an anglo indian who founded this calcutta and raja ram mohan roy taught here history and literature these are the facts which you have to remember of course it is very important for your exam in 1825 he himself founded Vedant College at Calcutta and in this college he introduced two new subjects one is mechanics and another is Voltaire's philosophy as i told you that he was influenced by many modern western liberal thinkers of 19th century and 18th century so voltaire was one famous french philosopher now if you look at this mechanics that is law of motion that is a pure science subject and this is a pure political science subject this is what lacking in indian education systems we had not updated our own curriculum and syllabi and what was taught in his hindu society say in gupta period 1500 years back was uh, same topic was being taught without any updating and the same problem was muslim education system when it came in 1314th century it was very modern but also they didn't update their syllabi so raja ram mohan roy when set up this college with the focus to bring the modern science natural science and social science papers in his college 
But the most famous organization which he founded in 1828 at Calcutta was Brahmo Sabha. Now it was this Brahmo Sabha which was later on called as Brahmo Samaj because the people who joined this like Dibindranath Thakur, the famous Rabindranath Thakur's father and Keshav Chandar Sen, they started spreading the movement or the message of Raja Ram Mohan Rai outside Bengal, especially Keshav Chandra Sen, made it an all India movement. So this Sabha had some objective. One such objective was to promote only monotheism. Even among the Parsis and among the Sikhs and the other communities, we will find that both the trend is very much visible. Since Muslims and Hindus in India are very large number, and don't forget almost one third of Indian population or subcontinent population is Muslim. So obviously, these two are generally more asked in this exam. So among the reformists, two very prominent person whom we can easily understand, Raja Ram Mohan Roy as well as Sir Sayyid Ahmed. As I told you that we will be discussing India in 19th century, which is very important for socio-religious reform movement. We know that there are two types of problem in 19th century India. One was general and one was specific. And also don't forget what we may think and vice versa. For instance, what a social reformer thought was a problem, you may not think it as a problem. So we have to understand from their perspective that what they thought as the problem and how they address her of the modern era. Revivalists were those who thought that the Western system and culture is ruining their civilization and culture and as a reaction they started reviving their old so-called great civilization or they thought that their own civilization of ancient past or medieval past was much better than what the West is offering to them. So among Hindus as well as among Muslims, we would find <coughs> both reformist as well as revivalist Khan. We can categorize them as a reformist. Those who were ready to accept something coming from West as well as also very proud of their own root. Like Raja Ram Mohan Rai was very proud of his own root, whether his root is in Vedas and Upanishad or whether his Bengali root. Similarly, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was very traditional Muslim at the same time very modern Muslim and he was very much ready to accept anything coming from the West. He wanted a relook of all. Now, to begin with, the first and the most important person in 19th century which we have to start of course is Raja Ram Mohan Rai. But before that, let again one very important point you must understand there are two types of movement which we can see easily in 19th century one is the reformist and another is the revivalist reformists are those who were responding with the west responding with the time responding with the scientific temp 